So, we see here then uh, the proposed solution. Punish those penis-having, violence-prone monsters by selectively infringing on their Second Amendment rights and theirs only. Now, uh, you know, this, this video isn't intended to tell you what you think about gun control, right? Because we could spend hours and hours and hours in the comments section debating something like that. It's usually a waste of time and it just goes in circles. But, but this video does intend to highlight how gun control is historically and has often been used in targeted ways to demonize certain demographics as well as to disenfranchise them. Uh, in this case, it's men and boys. It's, it's really amazing, I think, how uh, Courtney starts off this discussion by talking about the negative messages our society sends to men and boys while he ends the discussion by implying that we need to be extra careful about the male sex having access to firearms. Now, what type of message does that send to boys? Because it sounds a lot to me like what you're telling them, what you're telling boys, is that they are more likely to be killers by virtue of their genitals alone. And, you know, of course, that won't leave a lasting impression on boys, right? The truth is that no matter where you stand on the issue of gun control, you should be very, very afraid when society starts raising the question of whether or not we need to be especially concerned about this or that demographic specifically owning firearms and arming themselves. Before uh, 1967, the state of California was an open carry state, so armed Black Panthers exercising that right eventually put a quick end to that. And, you know, that happened, and there's going to be a video about that in the description box if you're interested. After that happened, that paved the way for the signing of the Mulford Act by the then governor of California, uh, who later became president, Ronald Reagan. Anyway, the next thing I know, I'm marching on the Capitol because we're up there to protest a bill they're trying to put in to keep us from carrying guns. Ronald Reagan is over here on the big front lawn. I got a statement to read. The Black Panther Party for Self-Defense calls upon the American people in general and the black people in particular to take careful note of the racist California legislature, which is now considering legislation aimed at keeping the black people disarmed and powerless at the very same time racist police agencies throughout the country are intensifying the terror, brutality, murder, and repression of black people. Ronald Reagan is escorted off the lawn by the state capitol police. I says, we can go inside somewhere. Isn't there a spectator section? We have these black panthers up here with the guns on the second floor. Can we get in? Can we get in the office? Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. In the office. Wait a minute. Are we under arrest? Am I under arrest? Am I under arrest? You place him under arrest. Go ahead, brother. Am I under arrest? Take your hands off me if I'm not under arrest. Am I under arrest? I'm telling you to take your hands off me. They put trumped up charges of conspiracy and felonies on everyone who went in to exercise a constitutional right and said they had no right to bear arms in a public place. The uh, California Penal Code section 1202 through 12027 and also the Second Amendment of the Constitution guarantees the citizen a right to bear arms on public property. Uh, and, and, you know, I often wonder what these, what the modern day Gipper loving, Gipper worshiping Tea Party has to say about, you know, their dear leader blaspheming the Constitution with his gubernatorial gun grabbing. But uh, we shouldn't pretend for a second that it is only those on the right that do this, lest we forget uh, when lefty social justice warrior uh, Andrea Grimes tweeted that we don't need to worry about disarming everybody, we just need to worry first about disarming white men's guns. Conspicuously, white women were left out of this, but she wants, this white woman, wanted to disarm all white men. It's very interesting, right? It's, it's this, this, this social justice warrior attitude of, you know, let's take all the evil guns from whitey, all in the name of equality or something. But, um, and I'm going to wrap this video up soon, gentlemen, but uh, I'm going to save the best for last here. The most worrying development regarding this issue of, uh, of uh, Second Amendment rights and men and boys. The most worrying issue I've seen comes from this article titled, quote, Restraining Orders, but for guns, end quote. And here are the relevant bits here. You're, you're not going to believe this. Jared Loner, I can never pronounce that. Jared Lee Loner's uh, parents, uh, this is the, the um, 
the man who was convicted, the mentally ill man who was convicted of uh, killing several people, and including, uh, or not including, but injuring uh, the congresswoman Giffords. All right, so it says, Jared Lohner's parents knew that he could be dangerous. In the months before his shooting rampage in a Tucson parking lot, they took away his shotgun, they disabled his car at night, they advised him to seek mental health care, but none of these actions stopped Lohner from purchasing a handgun and taking a taxi cab to an event where uh, Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords or Representative Gabrielle Giffords was speaking. He opened fire, killing six people and injuring 13 others, including Giffords. It says, quote, the parents identified this risk and my goodness, they were taking some really bold steps to try to prevent what happened, but it wasn't enough, said Shannon Frateroli. Frateroli, I believe that is the pronunciation there. A gun violence prevention researcher at Johns Hopkins University. They didn't have enough tools at their disposal to prevent that new purchase, she said. Frateroli is a co-author on a new paper in the Journal of Behavioral Sciences and the Law, which advocates for a new option for parents like loners. And, and that is gun violence restraining orders, or GVROs. And like a domestic violence restraining order, GVROs give families an option to petition a court when they fear the actions of a loved one. In September 2014, California became the first state to establish a GVRO system. When the law comes into effect in 2016, immediate family members and domestic partners, get, you know, get, get, get a load of that, domestic partners will be able to petition courts to have guns removed from those they fear may act in violence and prohibit them from purchasing firearms for the length of the restraining order. Law enforcement officers also will be able to request GVROs. Initial restraining orders will last up to 21 days, but can be extended to one year, end quote. Now, to be fair, to be fair here, uh, the proposal does seem to be steered at allowing relatives to file one of these gun violence restraining orders in order to prevent their mentally ill relatives from having access to firearms. Fine, okay. You know, I mean, I understand the logic behind that. But we need to then ask ourselves whether or not it's a great idea to allow one's relatives to unilaterally petition the government to remove your Second Amendment rights. So again, let's, let's look back to the language that's being used here family members and quote domestic partners now how long before women use this against men who own firearms to legally disarm them by filing one of these gvros right and using it to help her acquire custody in the family course in the process potentially speaking do women not already do this with regular restraining orders are women not prone to making accusations false accusations of pedophilia in order to uh, alienate the father from the children and separate them forcibly by the, by virtue of the state? Why wouldn't women then add this to their list of options for disenfranchising men via the state? They, I mean, we've already proven that they do this. Why wouldn't they employ these measures as well? Now, the, the most disturbing part of this is, uh, quote, gun rights advocates are worried about due process rights and vagaries in the law. GRVOs will be decided ex parte, meaning the person who stands accused does not need to be involved in the proceedings. A person can have his or her firearms taken away before getting the chance to contest the order, end quote. So that's, that's pretty incredible. Ask yourself the question, gentlemen. Can a jilted ex-wife or, you know, your baby's mother or whatever use this law unfairly and maliciously against you? I'm just going to let you uh, dwell on that for a while.